hail and welcome to this week's episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining this week. If this is your first time joining, my name is Jesse and I am the weekly host here on this channel wherein I discuss various uh, Norse heathenry related topics, things that may strike my interest or fancy at the time, uh, some other related videos that may come from uh, fan requested content. Um, you can check out all the videos in the playlist section and we have some uh, series type things that we run here on the channel. There's a deity discussion series that I want run once a month. There's a kind of a Bragi's Corner storytelling type thing that I do. There's a whole mole discussion. All that is in the video uh, playlist section. You can check that out. If it's anything that you're interested in, I encourage you to please become a subscriber to the channel. And if you like what you see and want to see it every time I upload new content, click the bell notification. That way you are notified every time that I have new content here on the channel. So today's discussion, um, as you can see by the title, is going to be about the whole DNA thing. Uh, this is something that I see coming up a lot lately, more recently, uh, actually. And uh, so does DNA really matter for us as heathens nowadays? Uh, in, in the modern construct of things, does, does DNA even really matter? Um, so we're going to be touching up upon some things of where I see where it does matter or where it is important and where I see some things of where it's not so important. So I like to always say, uh, I, may, I may not say it at every introduction of the video, but this is my view, okay? This is my kind of insight on things. It may not be your insight and it certainly isn't the overall, you know, I'm not covering the entire worldview of heathenry by any means. This is my view on things a lot of the time, so take that as such. I definitely invite comments and, and insight down in the comment section, so whatever you think, whatever you feel, please be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of this video, what your views are on the subject at hand, and let us know what you, thought, what, what you guys think. You know, so before we get into the discussion, I always like to light a candle, burn some incense, uh, so we're going to go ahead and get that going, and we will get into today's discussion topic. Alright. That incense is burning pretty bright right now. I need to put it under, uh, put it under wraps. There we go. Alright. So... I see, the, the reason why I wanted to talk about this today is because I see a lot of social media groups popping up, um, or a lot of people in social media groups that I'm in that, that, that pop up and, and they're like, you know, well, guys, I just ran my DNA test. I just, I just submitted my, you know, my, my DNA, whether it be um, you know, saliva or blood or whatever it may be, to this organization, whatever, whether it be Ancestry.com or whatever these other sites that are going around nowadays and, you know, hey guys, I am, you know, three-fifths Scandinavian, I am one-third Swedish, I am, you know, one percent, two percent Norwegian, whatever. Um, and so, what, I, what I'm seeing here nowadays is a lot of people are doing this thing to sort of validate or, or you know, bring about some sort of solidity to the fact that, hey guys, I am of Scandinavian descent and therefore I can now officially follow this path of heathenry and follow the Norse Germanic gods. And it strikes a nerve to me in some way um, and in different ways. So what I want to first talk about today is why is DNA important? Why is this, why is, why does this even matter? To us, why why are we even doing this? Why is this particular pathway? Why is this particular folkway even so concerned? Why are these people that are so concerned with the Viking aesthetic, the Norse heathen aesthetic? Why is everybody so stuck on this? I need to know if I'm Scandinavian, if I'm Norse Germanic, whatever. Why am I? Why is this even such an important thing? Right. One of the first important things that I think that people are stuck on is because this is. Norse heathenry uh, is largely a ancestral veneration folkway. We honor our ancestors 
as much or more than we do the gods that we hail and venerate on, uh, on a regular basis. The reason for that is because our ancestors are more directly in tune to our day-to-day -day activities and our day-to-day -day lifestyles and things that, you know, kind of surround our living and our life. They are more in tune to that than the gods are. And so we look to venerate them the, and, and honor them in, you know, uh, whether it be ritual, whether it be offerings, sacrifices, things like that. We're, we're going to spend time speaking and communing with our ancestors in our own respective ways, whether whatever, whatever that hearth culture around our families and around our hearths kind of envelop, right? Your hearth culture may be different in honoring your ancestors than what mine are, but in some sort of way, we have a very close connection to our ancestors. Whether we knew them or not, we, we look to hail them, and we look to honor them, we look to respect them and venerate them. Um, so in that way, we, we look to our, our ancestral ties as a very important part of this, this folk way. Another thing is that the concept of our roots. Um, our roots... Where, where we come from is very, very important, uh, I feel, as heathens, in, in, in a larger aspect. No matter how you view it individually or in your tribe or kindreds, however, they, however you specifically, whatever your tribal culture is, whatever your kindred culture is, whatever that may specifically be, I think that in the larger aspect and in the broader spectrum, we all value the importance of our roots. And the reason for that, I feel, is that we look to ancestry, or we look to, to heathenry as a, as, as a larger view of things. We look to heathenry as a sort of a tree, right? Um, and without a tree having strong roots, there is weakness. Um, a tree cannot grow strongly over time and have a longevity at, uh, at all without having strong roots. Now, there's a, there, there's a paradox there. You, you can't be so root-bound that you don't allow for growth of the branches and the, and the limbs and things like that to, to expand and grow from, um, but you have to have that root structure. You have to know where your roots are, and you have to have the importance focused on the roots, right? So without roots, a tree is not going to grow strong. It's not going to be able to establish its strength, its, its solidity. Um, it, it's going to be a tree that grows too quickly, that is not root bound, will eventually fall over, right? And a, and a tree that is so root bound that it does not allow for growth is going to just become bogged down. It's, it's not going, to, it's going to be just become stagnant, right? It's not going to, going to allow for a healthy growth. Um, so the importance of, of this whole DNA thing, I feel that a lot of people are focused on is that, yeah, we need to know where we come from. We need to know where our roots are. We need to know where we are, where we are coming from to be able to focus on and venerate those in specific ancestors, right? Um, now, if you're drawn to the Norse Germanic uh, you know, gods and goddesses of, the, of the, the, those pantheons, um, then you would most likely, uh, you know, have some sort of ancestral ties to that specific region, right? Wherein those gods and goddesses were hailed, venerated, worshipped, whatever you want to call it, um, you would tend to think that if you are drawn to honor those specific gods, Odin, Thor you know, uh, Baldur, Freyg, Freya, Tyr, all these other gods that are, that are hailed and, and, and recognized in the northern European sector of the world. You know, you would think that the, the, the folks who are wanting to follow that specific pathway have some sort of ancestral ties because that's what our ancestors follow. That, those are the gods and the goddesses that our ancestors took time to, to venerate in their in their religious or, or, or faith-based folk way. I, I use the term religion very loosely here because I don't like to associate religion, associate, you know, organize religion with pagan or heathen constructs of things because I feel like there's 
two totally different ends, but whatever your spiritual pursuit of life is, right? Like your ancestors were tied to that specific region. So if you are if you are attracted to the Norse or Germanic gods and goddesses, then there's a very strong chance I feel that you have ancestral ties to that because why else would you be interested in that other than maybe the surface aesthetic of it, right? Um, another thing is that, you know, uh, l l let's look at the definition of ancestral worship, right? According to the Merriam-Webster definition of it, um, and I'm going to read the literal textbook definition of ancestor worship, uh, it literally means it is the custom of venerating deceased ancestors who are considered still uh, a part of the family and whose spirits are believed to have the power to intervene in the affairs of of the living. And I feel like that's a pretty good, strong description of what ancestor worship is. We may not necessarily know who all our ancestors are. We know some of them. We know obviously from, you know, our immediate family, those who we maybe had physical interaction with, um, who have, who are no longer among the living, uh, with us on Midgard. But there is deceased ancestors there there is folks who have been a part of our familial line that we look to uh honor and venerate for those specific reasons because we feel like they have an interest we they have a tie to us as living human beings now um and then another reason why i feel like the dna thing becomes so important is that a lot of a lot of folks look to this whole path as that, okay, without those blood ties, without that literal DNA, you know, chemical construct of living beings, right? Without that whole blood tie thing, how can we truly venerate or, or honor the ancestors of that region if we have no ancestral ties? It would be like if I was interested in, and I'm just, you know, kind of, pulling something out of a hat, you know, if I was, if I was interested in the Egyptian, uh, construct of the, a polytheistic folk way, if I was into Anubis and Osiris and Isis and all these other various Egyptian gods, but I didn't have any ancestral ties to that region, you know, and I'm not even sure if the, you know, the, the veneration of those specific pagan gods of the Egyptian time period are closely associated with ancestors or whatever, but I'm kind of using it as an example. You know, if I didn't have ancestral ties to that part of the world, why would I even be interested in pursuing that? I feel like the draw to those specific gods have something to do with the ancestral ties that you share with folks that have lived and died and gone on before you. So that is part of what I feel is kind of what's important for where the DNA thing kind of makes its its stance, right? Why why people are, are specifically interested in focusing on? It. They want to know where they come from. They want to know is my draw, is my interest even focused in the right direction? Am I feeling the draw because of ancestral ties, or am I feeling it based off of the surface aesthetic of it, right? Now, why is it not important? where it becomes something that I don't feel has any sort of validity in it, one of the first things that I would want to say to that is that the gods and goddesses that we we feel attracted to, you know, the Odin, Thor, and all these other, you know, chief figures of the Norse pantheon, don't care. Like, they have no interest. They have no... They, I, don't, I don't think that they even care... Um, what our blood ties or, or lineage is when it comes to honoring or, you know, venerating them specifically. I don't think that they will look at you as being, well, you have no Northern European descent, therefore, why are you even focusing on me? I don't think they even care. You know, if you are drawn to them in a specific way, if you are interested in, in following, you know, this heathen path and these are the gods that you're attracted to to want to venerate or worship then i don't think the gods are, are are looking at us and going well you don't have scandinavian or northern european germanic descent anything like that in your bloodline so therefore you you i don't 
think there's any validity in your worshiping or, or venerating me. I don't, I truly don't believe that, and I don't think the large aspect of the heathen community feels the same way. Um, another thing is that our ancestors gave us more than just DNA, right? The, 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 the physical, scientific parts of our bloodlines and all that kind of fun stuff, there's more to what we inherited from our ancestors than just DNA. All right? We inherited their or log, their luck, their, their, the things that they did that transcend through time and space as we know it as mortals, as in, in our profane concept of the construct of time and space and everything. Their, their, their deeds, their orlog, the, the, the things that go beyond the physical realm, right? We inherit that as well. So whether it's, you know, whether we have ancestral ties based on blood or whether we have ancestral ties based off of their interactions with other people and we inherit that luck, we inherit that, what's called orlog, right? Uh, that is... That is a large part, I feel, anyway, of what we inherit from our ancestors. It's not just the DNA part. It's not just the, the, the physical, scientific, you know, where our bloodlines can be traced back to. Which, after you get down further along the lines, can be pretty watered down. Um, and another thing is, too, is that, you know, we have a lot of folks, I feel, that come into this folkway who are adopted who maybe don't have or don't know what their physical DNA lineage trait can be traced back to, right? We have some folks that maybe adopted or folks that um, just simply don't know what their lineage is. Like I'm with a family because they adopted me, but I don't know what my own physical structure of DNA traces back to because I'm, my family is who has raised me my whole life and they are they are my parents, right? Like, just because you're an adopted individual doesn't mean that these folks who raised you are any less your mother and father because they literally took the time out of their lives to raise you as their own, whether you were theirs from their own loins or not, whether their DNA traces back, you know, whether your DNA traces back to them or not. This whole thing of adoption, right? You were sort of grafted into that family, um, but yet you feel a call to a, 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 a structure or a folk way, um, a faith way, if you will, um, of something that may, may, may not necessarily be tied to you as an individual because of your DNA. You don't know where, you, you know where your family line goes back to, but you know where your family is based off of the energy and the life and everything that, that the people who raised you have given. Um, and so... You can still call on your ancestors, whether you know them or not, for strength and, and for guidance and for things like that. They are more intimately concerned with you as an individual, whether they are tied to your, the, the, the family that you grew up in and the family that they were raised by, whether you are blood tied to those people or not. You can still call on your ancestors. You can still reach out to them on a spiritual level, I feel, without even touching the, the, the folks that maybe necessarily raised you or, or had anything to do with your physical upbringing, you still have that ancestral tie. You may have not known them. You may not have known specifically where you come from, but the people who you are with, the people who took the time to give of their life to you, to raise you, if you are drawn to that specific line of things, then those ancestors, I feel, will feel close to you because... The, again, the whole orlog thing, the whole energy, the life energy, the, the, the deeds that are done are tied to us. It's, it goes beyond just DNA. It goes beyond what's just in our bloodline, right? It, go, it goes beyond that. It goes into what's in our spiritual and, and life force, the, the, the energy that we give to those around us. Again, this is just my view on things, but I'm kind of going along with things. Of what is not important about DNA? It goes beyond just the blood. Um, another thing is that you know you can certainly honor and worship the old gods of Northern Europe uh, without having ancestral ties to that region because I contest the accuracy of modern DNA blood tests that 
you see out there, you know, like you send your saliva, you send your blood, and they tell you what your, you know, percentages of which I can, I have a problem with some of those things. I think that, you know, there's some accuracy in it, but it's, it's questionable at, at the very least, because when it comes down to it, guys, you know, you can only go back so far um, in to the accuracy of where you are physically, where your DNA is physically tied to, right? You can only go back so far with, with good accuracy. At some point, it, it gets so watered down and it gets so lost in the mix of things where it's a crapshoot, you know? And then, it, you know, where, where it gets to that point, point where people are like, well, you, you need to have a certain percentage of you know, Scandinavian bloodlines to be able to follow this, I feel like that is getting into dangerous territory of racism, where you think that there needs to be some sort of purity in the preservation of a race, and that is just getting into things that myself, as an individual, do not support, Midgard Musings does not support, I am a signer and a, and a supporter of the Declaration 127, uh, which I will link down in the description be below, if you are against hatred, and if you are against bigotry, and if you are against any sort of discrimination within the heathen context, you need to sign Declaration 127. It's a, it's a reflection of Hobomol 127, um, which is, is that if you see ill deeds, if you see evil being done, you count those ill deeds and you count those wrongdoings as your own and you give your enemies no quarter. In a loose translation of the thing, right, you're not going to stand for hatred and bigotry and anything that would destroy the backbone of what heathenry is. And what the backbone of heathenry is, is that the preservation and the conservation of our community. Our community is not a single race-based thing. You do not have to be 100%, 50%, 30%, 20%, 19%, 3% Scandinavian, in my view. You do not have to be any percent Scandinavian to carry on and hold the torch, carry the torch on in this heathen construct. And there may be some people that watch this and that say, no, you have to be of some sort of Northern European descent. Whatever your view is, not my hall, not my call. And I'm not trying to sit here and say that you are wrong for thinking a certain way, but what I am saying is that my view, my perception of heathenry is that DNA does not matter as much as people want to say it does, okay? You can spend the money, if you want to, to determine if you will have any sort of Scandinavian bloodlines. And when it comes back and it says that you're 3% Swedish, or 9% Norwegian, or, you know, 17% Icelandic, or if it comes back and it says that you're 2% Northern European, and you're like, okay, well, I've got that little bit, and I can, I can follow this path. Do not let that determine your interest and your the fuel behind where you're going in your path if you are drawn to this path before you even knew what sort of dna you have connected to that specific region if you are drawn to this path honor the gods honor the gods in your living honor their honor your ancestors in what you do wherever they may come from they love you they support you they back you in what you're doing you are not tied to just DNA. You have so much more than just DNA that connects you in this path. So anyways, guys, it's been a bit of a long video. I apologize for that, but let me know what you guys think. Everybody that's watching down here on Facebook,